So today we're going to cover the alpha beta ratio as radiobiology is an important aspect of medical physics and something that very well could be asked of you in your part three oral exam. So what is the alpha beta ratio? What ratio would you expect for a late responding tissue, a early responding tissue and a tumor? And then how does this ratio change the way you treat a tumor? So the alpha beta ratio is the dose essentially where the alpha and beta components of cell killing are equal. Now that tells you pretty much how resistant a cell is going to be to radiation damage. So a high alpha beta ratio represents the linear curve where essentially the alpha term dominates and a lower alpha beta ratio indicates a, a greater, a more curved line. So we're also going to have a separate video on what the equation is, what that looks like. And so we won't cover it in this video, but it's very important you also know that. So know what this means, know what the equation is, and then the fact that this alpha beta ratio essentially can help you determine the fractionation scheme for your patients and their treatments based on the alpha beta and then number of fractions and the dose per fraction. That is how you can come up with your fractionation scheme. That's imperative that you know, even though we aren't necessarily covering it in this video. So now what would you expect for a late responding tissue? So late responding, LR here, that is going to be organs or things like neurons. And that is going to be three. And then if you look at something like early responding, now that's something like skin where it doesn't take much dose to cause some type of reaction such as erythema, uh, epilation. Whereas if you think about nerves or neurons, it takes a lot more dose because they're very specific. If you look at a law of Triboni and our Bergeoni and Tribidal, okay, nerves are very specialized, so it takes more dose for them to really get affected by radiation, whereas skin is much more susceptible to those, and so they are a 10, so a high alpha beta ratio, and then, for example, let's talk about tumors, and as we treat, obviously we can see them even through the course of a typical a standard fractionation treatment, we see them shrink and break up. And so when you think about that, think about the fact that, oh yeah, it does make sense that their alpha beta ratio is 10 because they are affected quite drastically by the radiation. And then finally, how does that ratio change the way that you would treat a tumor? So if a high ratio tumor again, a high alpha beta ratio, if that exists, you want to fractionate to reduce late effects. Now, a low ratio tumor fractionation allows tumors to repair and actually impairs the effectiveness of the treatment. So those are things you need to consider with alpha beta ratio. If you have any questions, please comment below. Just study this in detail and prepare yourself for part three and you'll knock it out of the park. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.